The hills of Manipur are ablaze, and not just with fire. The conflict between the Meite and Kuki communities has taken a new turn. The Meite, facing accusations of ethnic cleansing, are now seeking alliances. They are actively engaging with other tribal groups. This raises concerns about the escalating conflict. The situation in Manipur demands immediate attention. We are witnessing a dangerous game of manipulation and power. Will these new alliances quell the violence or fan the flames of discord? To understand the current situation, we must delve into the historical context of the Meite Kuki conflict. This feud is rooted in land, identity, and political power. The conflict dates back to the colonial era with the British in Manipur. British policies favored the Meite, creating a power imbalance. This marginalized the Kuki and other hill tribes. After independence, the situation remained unchanged. The Maite have since adopted a strategy to align with other non-Kuki tribals. This alliance has escalated tensions further. This led to violent clashes in the 1990s. The current violence is a reminder of unhealed wounds. The Maite community, in a bid to strengthen their position, has embarked on a calculated campaign to forge alliances with other tribal groups in Manipur. This strategy, while seemingly astute, is deeply concerning. It reveals a calculated attempt to exploit existing fault lines within Manipuri society for political gain. The Meite are leveraging shared anxieties and historical grievances to sway other tribes to their side. They are playing on the fears of smaller tribes, portraying the Kukis as a threat to their land and identity. This tactic, however, is a dangerous gamble. It risks widening the conflict, dragging more communities into the vortex of violence. The Meite's attempts to forge alliances are not driven by a genuine desire for peace or unity. It is a calculated move to isolate the Kukis and legitimize their own actions. This strategy, far from bringing peace to Manipur, threatens to ignite a wider ethnic conflict. One of the most alarming aspects of the Meite's strategy is the involvement of tribal student organizations. These young people, instead of being nurtured as future peace builders, are being drawn into the heart of the conflict. They are being used as pawns in a dangerous game, their idealism and energy exploited for political ends. This manipulation of tribal youth is not only morally reprehensible, but also strategically short-sighted. It deepens existing divisions and creates a generation scarred by violence and hatred. These young people, instead of being agents of peace and reconciliation, are being turned into instruments of conflict. The involvement of student organizations in this conflict is a dangerous escalation. It highlights the urgent need for dialogue and de-escalation. The future of Manipur depends on its youth, and their energy should be channeled towards building bridges, not burning them. A house divided sowing discord among Manipur's tribes. The Meite strategy of aligning with other tribes is not just about gaining numerical strength, it is about sowing discord within Manipur's diverse tribal tapestry. By exploiting historical grievances and playing on existing tensions, they are deliberately creating a climate of fear and mistrust among communities that have long coexisted. This manipulation of inter tribal relations is a recipe for disaster. It threatens to unravel the delicate social fabric of Manipur, pushing the state further down the abyss of conflict. The Meite leadership must understand that true strength lies in unity, not in division. The pursuit of peace requires building bridges of understanding and empathy. The current strategy of exploiting differences will only lead to greater suffering and instability. It is time for the Meite community to choose the path of peace and reconciliation, not the path of division and discord. Exploiting Vulnerability, the Ethics of Maitai Strategy The Maitai community's attempt to forge alliances while strategically cunning raises serious ethical questions. It reveals a willingness to exploit the vulnerability of smaller tribes for political gain. These communities, often marginalized and lacking resources, are easy prey to manipulation. The Mai Tai, by offering them a sense of security and belonging, are essentially co-opting them into their narrative. This manipulation of vulnerable communities is a blatant disregard for their agency and self-determination. 
It is a betrayal of trust that will have long-lasting consequences for inter-tribal relations in Manipur. The Mai Tai leadership must be held accountable for their actions. Their tactics are not only divisive but also morally reprehensible. True leadership lies in fostering unity and understanding, not in exploiting the vulnerabilities of others. Beyond Battle Lines – The Path to Peace in Manipur The situation in Manipur is dire but it is not beyond repair. The path to peace lies in moving beyond the battle lines, in acknowledging the shared humanity that binds all communities in Manipur. It is time for the Meite leadership to abandon their divisive strategy and embrace the path of dialogue and reconciliation. The first step towards peace is acknowledging the pain and suffering inflicted on all sides. There must be accountability for the violence and justice for the victims. This will require a commitment to truth and reconciliation, a willingness to confront the past and build a better future. The international community also has a crucial role to play. They must exert pressure on all parties to renounce violence and engage in meaningful dialogue. The people of Manipur deserve peace, and it is the responsibility of the international community to support them in their pursuit of a just and lasting solution. Time for Truth and Reconciliation A Call for Dialogue The Meite's strategy of forming alliances against the Kukis is a dangerous game that threatens to plunge Manipur deeper into chaos. It is a strategy that thrives on division and mistrust, jeopardizing the future of the state. The time for such gamesmanship is over. The only way forward is through genuine dialogue and reconciliation. This will require courage, compassion and a willingness to compromise. The leaders of both the Maite and Kuki communities must come to the table with open hearts and a shared commitment to peace. They must be willing to listen to each other's grievances, acknowledge past wrongs and work together to find a way forward. This is not the time for blame or retribution. This is the time for healing, for forgiveness and for building a future where all communities in Manipur can live together in peace and harmony. The people of Manipur deserve nothing less.